So I've settled on imaging the fireworks galaxy and I'll pop up what the NGC number is in the top corner because the bit of paper that I wrote it down on is in the kitchen. It's quite late now, it's probably half 12 and around here the street lights go off at about midnight so it suddenly got a bit darker and the sky's looking nice and clear. Uh, so yeah, just to run through quickly, I'm imaging with the Fuji X-T1 I'm at ISO 800. I'm trying to keep the ISO lower now because I, I think you get more dynamic range out of a camera if you keep your ISO low. And here's a chart that kind of demonstrates what I'm saying. You can see the, the numbers of the stops and dynamic range and you've got ISO on the left hand side and the different cameras at the top. As you know, a lot of you, I work for First Light Optics and they've kindly loaned me a uh, ASI Air Plus to play with. They only work with Canon, Nikon and ZWO. So I'm going to either get a dedicated ZWO Deep Sky camera or um, I was thinking about getting a Canon 2000D uh, T7 um, because it seems like a popular camera that you'd pick up as a first camera to give astrophotography a go. Um, a lot of Cameras now are mirrorless, uh, but the DSLR still seems quite popular for astrophotography. So I thought it might be good to pick one of those up, A, because it will it will work with the air sight. I'm going to have to throw that sub away because I'm not the telescope. Um, I think it would be great because it will be, um, it will link up to the SI air, work properly with that when I've got that hooked up. And also I'll be able to do some videos with it, putting myself in the shoes of someone kind of like, getting their first equipment because it's quite likely that they'll buy a camera the same or similar to that to get going in this hobby. So I could do some videos where I'm trying like nightscape photography and um, some deep sky astrophotography on the Star Trekker and on the Gem 45 as well. We'll see what happens. I may just get a second hand Canon from MPB which is my regular haunt for cameras. I'm going to leave this clicking away uh, hopefully I've got enough data to get a good image. Um, stack it in Deep Sky Stacker, process it in GIMP, and I'm going to watch some TV while it's doing that. Hopefully not fall asleep and get my kit rained on. Famous last words. But it has been remarkably cloudy recently, so I've really struggled, which is why my last video with this telescope was of the moon, because the only clear night I got was with the moon blazing. So tonight there's no moon and it's clear. So, and it's Saturday night, so no matter how much I was yawning before coming out, there was no way I was missing this opportunity to get out here. Now I'm out doing it, it's kind of revitalised me, um, even though I've not had any caffeine. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to get hopefully a picture to show you. I was going to shoot the Markarian's chain, and I did initially point the telescope at Markarian's chain in the Virgo supercluster and I thought I'd get loads of those little smudgy galaxies, that'd be really cool to see. But because of my eyesight looking at the tiny screen, I wasn't sure of my framing, but I could see when I swung over to the fireworks galaxy that it was well framed. So that's the one I've settled on. Hopefully it looks good and I can show you at the end. A big thank you to everyone for watching, especially my channel members, Dan the Man, Four Grapples and Ziggy Friends. And until next time, tell those clouds to sod off.